Good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, so the talk will be about security too, but mostly focused on the, the protocol point of view. So we'll uh, speak about uh, actual uh, and current uh, LoRa 1.0 security. We will uh, introduce the new feature in uh, LoRa 1.1, and then we will discuss uh, the security announcements. And uh, we will conclude, uh, and I will give you recommendations for your uh, projects. But first, let me introduce myself. So I'm a French security expert. Uh, in IoT, mostly, uh, I do a lot of uh, pen tests and, and research on uh, IoT devices. I'm mostly uh, interested in uh, protocol security and cryptography. I'm working at, at Digital Security, uh, which is a subsidiary of the Econocom Group. And we have our own uh, lab uh, in Paris, where we do a lot of uh, research and experiments and audits on IoT devices. And among those uh, research, uh, I will uh, show you uh, our researches on LoRaWAN security. So first, uh, in our opinion, uh, LoRaWAN depends on um, LoRaWAN security. Sorry, depends on four uh, topics. On wireless communication security, of course, this is the, the main point, and this, is, this will be the, the main point in, in uh, today's presentation. It depends also on application security, which can be the device firmware security or the backend applications. Third, on the infrastructure security, and uh, fourth, on the hardware security of your devices. Right. So we have developed a, a private um, LoRaWAN framework in order to assess the security of different devices and, and gateways uh, to be able to uh, play uh, replay attacks, to be able to sniff traffic, to be able to test for uh, known or, or weak security keys. Uh, so this is a, an example of uh, a decryption of traffic uh, using uh, the, the join and check at, at the very beginning of the communication. And thanks to this framework, we were able to uh, find a lot of vulnerabilities in LoRaWAN 1.0. The full study was presented uh, two years ago uh, in DHAG uh, at hardware.io conference. But uh, here is a summary. Uh, within the four topics we, we discussed. So uh, regarding wireless security, uh, we have found a lot of uh, replay attacks of denial of service. Uh, the main point was uh, keystream use, reuse attack that the attacker can force a keystream reuse. And uh, consequently, uh, there were attacks on encryption using uh, pre-computed tables. And we found a number of weak keys, uh, even in, in production, on, on some networks, and corporate networks, too. Regarding application security, uh, we found a random number uh, generation weak uh, circuits and algorithms in some devices or in some uh, stacks, software stacks. Regarding the infrastructure, uh, we found uh, a lot of vulnerable backend uh, protocols. Uh, I mean, uh, UDP protocols in plain text, uh, MQTT protocols, which are not uh, encrypted or authenticated at all, which allows uh, easy spoofing, sniffing, and even denial of service. And uh, even uh, a, a nationwide um, LoRaWAN network that is completely uh, accessible, public, publicly accessible. The backbone was completely open, so um, everyone can basically uh, sniff the, the entire backbone. And uh, the fourth topic was about hardware security. So we found in a number of devices a lot of comments to dump the memory of the device, including all the secrets and all the keys. So that's a problem for hardware security. Uh, we found uh, debug ports that were enabled, and uh, we found attacks using side channel analysis, uh, which is a way to measure the um, current in the device that allowed us to extract the keys uh, just uh, using uh, 40 or 50 uh, join requests. Right. 
So this was a summary uh, of uh, our study on LoRaWAN 1.0. So now let's talk about the new feature that were introduced in LoRaWAN 1.1. So this was released more than a year ago. Uh, 1.1 uh, specification is not directly backward compatible with 1.0. So it requires an additional stack uh, in most devices. Uh, probably there will be two stacks uh, on newer devices. Uh, one stack is quite difficult to, to have to support both uh, standards. And it will require a major update on the server side. So uh, because of all uh, these uh, changes, uh, we expect that the, the first devices and networks will be ready uh, in one or two years, but not uh, long before. Right. So the new features uh, are mostly the uh, Endeavor roaming device. Huh? Um, under our roaming for devices, sorry, which allows the device to be controlled by a foreign network, uh, which is not possible uh, at the moment. Uh, um, actual um, and current um, LoRa networks only support passive roaming uh, for the moment. So they cannot be controlled. They can, they can be listened by a foreign uh, network, but cannot be controlled by foreign networks. So this will allow uh, active and over roaming. Uh, you will be able to uh, have bidirectional uh, uh, communication using uh, Class B uh, devices. And there is a companion specification, which is called uh, BEI. Uh, Joanne uh, talked about it. Uh, it. This stands for LoRaWAN Backend Interfaces. And this is the, the, the biggest change, in my opinion, from a security point of view, because this allows uh, networks to be uh, partitioned and segmented. So instead of the uh, former um, joint server you had in uh, 1.0 specification, you are now able to split uh, this network server in uh, several uh, servers, and mostly on a joint server, which can be uh, managed by a third party. This allows the devices uh, to be um, uh, set up uh, in a completely independent uh, manner, and that will work on any uh, LoRaWAN network, because the authentication is outside uh, your uh, chosen network. Right. LoRaWAN 1.1 has uh, a better separation uh, between the MAC and the payload encryption. Uh, so there will be a session uh, specially for um, the, uh, the, the signaling protocol, and there is another session just for the application security. So they are completely separated. Um, a new feature also has um, uh, what is called um, multicast. This allows to speak to many uh, devices at the same time and will allow uh, firmware upgrades huh, uh, with a very um, low uh, uh, use, use of the low usage sorry, of uh, the um, radio time, right? So, what were the security enhancements since the very first specification? So, in 1.01, there were no significant changes, but uh, since 1.02. Um, the um, uplink frame, frame counter is encrypted and included in the confirmation uh, from all uh, downlink messages. Um, so uh, devices uh, recognize uh, if the uh, answer comes from a, a, a given message or another one, which was not possible in the very first uh, LoRaWAN specification. And this allows better protection against replay attacks uh, because uh, you cannot replay any message from uh, the network, any downlink message, uh, which was a possible attack in the very first standard. But most changes have been introduced uh, in uh, LoRaWAN 1.03 and later, with unicast and multicast support for Class B devices, and a few backports, uh, like the, the time synchronization feature that uh, allows the device to synchronize to the network time. 
Well, so uh, the companion uh, specification uh, backend uh, interface allows, uh, as we have seen, uh, network and server decomposition. So you can now split uh, the authentication and split uh, the encryption part over uh, several servers and have a better uh, control uh, of the security instead of the former standalone network server. Now the credential from your devices can be completely handled or managed uh, completely outside the, the network uh, using, for example, a hardware security module, uh, HSM, which allow a better network segmentation. So now let's talk about uh, LoRaWAN keys and session security. So there is a lot to uh, say about this, because there are uh, a lot of new keys introduced in uh, LoRaWAN 1.1 standard. Um, all the MAC commands are always encrypted. Uh, so this is quite new and allows better uh, privacy uh, for uh, your um, device management. The session security, as we have seen, is uh, split uh, into two different uh, security sessions. One for uh, the network management, uh, for the, the network you are connected uh, in, and one for your application security. So you have two different uh, session security instead of one. The frame counters now can never be reset. Uh, this was possible uh, with LoRaWAN 1.0. So even in ABP mode, uh, you cannot reset the, the frame counter. So you must have uh, a permanent storage where you uh, put uh, the, the frame counter if your device goes uh, offline or out of battery. But this uh, prevents any replay attacks uh, because you will have uh, every time a new key stream for your uh, packets. So that's better from a, a lot better from a security point of view. And now you don't have any random challenge when you are joining the, the network. Uh, this was uh, a security uh, issue in the very first standard. Now you don't have any uh, dev nonce uh, random uh, on check at the beginning. Now dev nonce is a counter that's increased every time. So it's different every time. And you cannot, you cannot have any replay uh, on the, um, the first handshake or any uh, subsidiary packets. So that's a lot better uh, uh, for uh, various forced keystream attacks we have uh, exposed uh, two years ago. So this is a figure with the uh, key management uh, when you're using uh, a new device with uh, the old uh, 1.0 network. In that case, all keys are uh, derived from the NW key, uh, key, master key, right? And if you use a new device with a new backend, the session is uh, split, as we have seen. So uh, the application security uh, relies on, on app key. Uh, that's still uh, the, the case, right? Already the case, sorry. And uh, everything that's on the network side uh, will be derived from a new key, uh, which is called uh, NW key. So you see, uh, the security context has completely split. Uh, so you have a better security, and uh, the network security can be handled by uh, other parties as well. And you still have the full control over your application and payload security on your side. Right? So what can we say about the keys? So there are a lot of new keys. Huh? Uh, there were three or four keys uh, in the, the very first standard. Now there are uh, nearly nine keys, right? The uh, counters are encrypted, huh? depending on the network uh, session key. The network session context is managed by the network server, whereas the application session context is managed by, by your application server. So you have, you, you have to do the management on both sides. But this gives you a better security, of course. And a new feature that allows you uh, better security is the region request. Uh, 
uh, that uh, Joan talked about uh, in the previous talk. So this is a feature that allows you to renew your security uh, context uh, by rekeying the device. Uh, at any time, you can uh, request a rekeying. Uh, and the network can ask for a rekeying. It's not only your device, but the, the rekeying can be made from the network. For example, if you uh, uh, roam on another, device, on another network, uh, you can start with a very new uh, security context. So that's a new feature in LoRaWAN 1.1. Uh, that's a way also to uh, avoid any um, uh, counter. Uh, the counters are on two bytes. Uh, so uh, that's, this enables uh, um, the, to, fin, this avoids, sorry, the counter not to overlap uh, over time because you, have, you renew the security context, so you start again at zero. So a few recommendations and conclusions about the, the new features. So our conclusion is LoRaWAN 1.1 has a very good security, a better security. Most of the issues of the LoRaWAN 1.0 standard were corrected. You have a better availability in general because of a better protection against active denial of service attacks. Uh, you, can, uh, you have a better availability because you can uh, reconfigure your device, you can refresh the security context, and you have no more uh, drift for class B devices because you can get the time from, from the network. Huh? You no more network drifts. So that's for the availability. Regarding the confidentiality, uh, of course, it's a lot better because you, don't, you cannot uh, have a keystream use, whether uh, accidentally or uh, by active attacks. So your confidentiality is better protected. Uh, the algorithms are still the same, but the, the context is uh, now uh, very hard for the attacker. And you have a better authentication because uh, you can uh, have your own joint server that protects the key even from uh, the uh, network provider. So you, you can uh, rely on your own uh, key server. But there are still some weaknesses. Uh, the, the, in my opinion, the, the, the greatest uh, weakness is um, uh, LoRaWAN lacks a, uh, a secure standard for uh, backend networks. Huh? You have uh, the very old uh, Semtech gateway to server interface, uh, which is uh, uh, nearly four years old. But uh, this is very uh, weak. Huh? This is plain text. This is uh, UDP, so this is very vulnerable to spoofing attacks, uh, to sniffing, because uh, it's, it's plain text, and uh, you can easily uh, uh, disconnect uh, a gateway or spoof a gateway using this protocol. So my advice is do not use the Semtech uh, gateway to server interface. Huh? Better use another protocol uh, like MQTT uh, over, for example, a VPN or a TLS uh, session, right? SSL is deprecated, so better uh, don't use it. Uh, the second weakness is uh, there is no uh, message padding enforced. Uh, remember that when you encrypt uh, data, the length of the data uh, uh, don't, uh, doesn't change. Uh, the plain text data is the same size as the encrypted data. So an attacker is able to guess uh, which kind of messages the device uh, sends. Right? If uh, your device sends, for example, it's hot sometimes and it's cold. Uh, some of the time, you are able to, uh, depending on the, the message size, to guess uh, which one is uh, this message or the other, because they, they differ by one byte, huh, for example. So be careful of the, um, the, the, the leaks uh, that comes from uh, the, um, the message size, even if the, this is encrypted, huh, because uh, the encrypted uh, payloads match the plain text payload size. You'd better uh, pad your messages uh, to, to the same size, huh? so you don't leak any uh, information about, for example, 
an emergency message which won't be the same size as the normal message uh, in a sensor, for instance. And the third uh, weakness is uh, the Mac uh, command set uh, in LoRaWAN 1.1 is very complex. So in our opinion, uh, this is uh, prone to uh, implementation errors or even a device denial of service huh, because of uh, deadlocks. Huh. Uh, the, the network can say to the device, OK, stick with this configuration, and these bands, uh, these channels, and so on. And uh, the device, uh, because of various conditions, can uh, be, be stuck, huh, and can be uh, in a deadlock, and uh, can, be, can be completely out of service. Uh, because of the compatibility and because of the, the complex uh, Mac uh, workflow, right? So our recommendations uh, to uh, better secure your uh, project and your LoRaWAN architecture is uh, use the latest standard, uh, either the 1.0x uh, specification or the 1.1 specification. Prefer the OTAA mode over the ABP mode. This allows you to uh, rekey uh, your uh, devices uh, quite often and uh, to um, protect against uh, various uh, replay attacks and various denial of service attacks. Actively monitor your gateway if you are using uh, your own uh, private network. Enforce the duty cycle. It's quite important because uh, uh, if uh, an attacker wants to uh, do an active attack on your network, uh, it will be very uh, difficult for him to uh, respect the duty cycle. He will have to send thousands of messages uh, uh, to, to guess, uh, for example, the, the, the nonce from the, the, the joint challenge. Uh, so uh, respecting the duty cycle will uh, make the attacker life very difficult, right? Protect your infrastructure uh, by using no default configuration, by using strong protocols uh, on the backend side, uh, encrypted and authenticated protocol, uh, mostly, with strong passwords. Better use uh, binary messages when you send uh, LoRaWAN data instead of JSON. Uh, this makes uh, known plain text attacks very difficult. Use constant length messages, as we have seen, uh, for the attacker not to guess what kind of messages you are uh, sending. Use different keys on every node, uh, of course. Uh, don't use devices where there are features uh, to dump the memory or to uh, read the keys. Or, if possible, use a secure element. That's the best way to protect uh, an IoT project and an architecture. Better use, uh, which is now uh, possible, uh, your own uh, joint server. Uh, and if you care about security, you can use your own hardware security module, HSM. And for a specific recommendation, you can ask us. We are experts in IoT, and uh, we have done more than 120 security audits on, on IoT devices in three years, so better ask for your specific needs. Uh, a few references if you uh, want to uh, read uh, about security. So my presentation, of course, the LoRaWAN specification and uh, the four uh, residual risks that uh, LoRa uh, Alliance has identified on uh, LoRaWAN 1.1 security. Right. So thank you for attending.